All right, we've got news on how they're going to do balance adjustments in the future and that they are going to do some sort of change to Shuri, but they weren't able to do it today. But let's go over what is happening now. And then we're also going to read what they said about it. We're also going to talk about what's going to happen in about two weeks. We're also going to talk about the cards dropping down from series four to series three, which is likely to happen at that time. If you go into game right now, you will find that there are four adjustments to cards and that is sunspot now has zero power shadow king now costs three instead of four uh red skull now has 12 power instead of five and then lastly century which is a card i do not have now is a 410 and the void is minus 10. so uh they also mentioned that there's going to be some sort of change to Shuri and they said that would happen on a Tuesday I believe on the 18th and it's interesting that there's going to be a, a a an actual nerf to Shuri but that won't happen until she's like series three so according to snap zone uh Kiralis is predicting that on the 18th or sometime this month uh the following cards will be dropping uh from four to three excuse me <coughs> Black Panther, Super Skull, Bast, Shuri, and Valkyrie. Uh, I, I, they're highly interesting cards right there. And then also going from five to four, well, Modoc, Ghost, and Stature. And then you can see uh, the timeline for the other cards to be dropped as follows. Now, let's go and read what they said about these changes. And I don't think everybody's going to be happy about this. Uh, whenever there are balance adjustments and uh, people's favorite cards or decks get adjusted or people get upset and then also uh when when people dislike a certain deck and it's not adjusted the way that they want it to be adjusted or quick enough people get upset so there's lots of opinions and uh i've read a lot of them more than welcome to put in the comment section uh, i love reading through them ota balance changes so what this is o ota so this is over the air so this is going to be balance adjustments that they can do every thursday is what they're proposing and they can't change the text of the card uh, like the way that they changed Wolverine. Remember how boring Wolverine was before and they changed it so that he's different now? But they can adjust the power and the cost. And they're, they're talking about doing that systematically uh, on a weekly basis. And it sounds like they have a whole list of cards that they want to buff. And it sounds like they have more cards that they want to buff than that they want to nerf. OTA stands over the air, refers to hotfix changes. While we're making content outside of our usual semi-monthly patch schedule this week, we're making four changes ongoing effect to encourage more diverse spread in the decks and individual cards being played. She said expectations patch won't cur cure all the metagains ills, but it should represent an improvement into our next action patch packs. Firstly, Red Skull. So like I said, he's dropping from 5, 513 to 512. Boy, he's getting really close to being an abomination, right? <laughs> I mean, he's almost an abomination. You're like, abomination's just a 59, and now he's a 512. But anyways... As our previous patch notes discuss, uh, the last adjusted Red Skull to weaken significantly his interactions with Shuri and Tasmara goals to keep his strength otherwise flat or even slightly improved and see how things settle once we've, we've softened Thanos' grip on the metagame. We know many players disagreed with that approach and we're weighing that feedback and we continue to debate internally how aggressive our balance update should be. In this case, things settled to an improved metagame. I'd agree with that. It's it's a little bit better, but it's still dominant with Shuri right now. Shuri was the best deck in the game. We'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, but the decks based around Shuri and Tasma are still too strong for our liking. We recognize Shuri is clearly the true offender here. And we have a balance change for Shuri ready. However, that change to Shuri needs a patch to be implemented. So that means it's going to be some sort of text, like mechanical change the way that Shuri works is my, if, if, uh, my interpretation of that. Uh, so they can't do it over the air. Uh, she is an interim adjustment to weaken the Shuri deck uh, just a bit more. We do expect Shuri to remain viable after this Red Skull tweak, but we don't want to drastically nerf multiple innocent cards when we have an incoming nerf to Shuri herself. Once that change to Shuri's life will revert this or previous Red Skull changes, maybe, but we're going to give that some time because we'd rather ensure a larger shift in the metagame and then he was also said something to like this similar onto Twitter. It says, I know you have further changes for Shuri, but when those changes are made, will you reconsider reverting Red Skull changes a bit for the Zero Sauron decks? 
I know her goal is to nerf Red Skull and Shuri, but not outside. Seems you have done the opposite. Uh, the announcement covers, but we'll consider it once the Duddle settles. So they definitely would consider that. Now, Sunspot. Now, Sunspot was one of my favorite cards. I love Sunspot. He's pool two. A lot of people use Sunspot. Uh, I think the issue with Sunspot was that he was in somewhere 40, between 40 and 45% of all decks. So Sunspot was seeing a lot of play. Now, the adjustment from 1-1 uh, one, one to 1-0 one, for me, uh, I still want to play him. Still a good card, right? I, I don't think this is going to matter a lot. Uh, Sunspot grows a lot. I mean, Sunspot's a great card. I don't think this is going to change a lot. Maybe this will open up other cards for play or people will pick other cards. We will see, but... Uh, I don't think I'm going to be yanking Sunspot out of decks just because of this change. I don't think this is going to obliterate his viability. Sunspot is the most heavily played cards. It is the most heavily played card in the game. Uh, the Y is obvious. He's strong. He's in Series 2. Has powerful synergies with other cards like She-Hulk and Infinite. Opportunity cost for having Reject is also very low since you only have to leave one spare energy on your turn to unlock his strength floor. And the ceiling can be very high. Yeah, uh, putting uh, Sunspot in like a, a, a flooded lane or something like that and letting it grow wins games. And then, of course, skipping turn five when you have She-Hulk or something like that. It was it was a, he's just a great card. All of this adds up to a solid criteria for a minor nerf, creating space for less played cards to compete more often for the slots in a deck. We're curious if nerfing She-Hulk would have an impact on Sunspot, but truthfully, we didn't expect any change and soon we'll be making this adjustment sooner rather than later. We did evaluate some other changes Sunspot, but for Series 2 cards, we want to retain the elegance of original design. I love that word. Just a touch weaker. As a default card in both Shuri and Thanos, this change does impact those dicks a bit more than others. Shadow King. Uh, I have played Shadow King, and yes, I have dropped Shadow King and wiped down a very large Red Skull down to uh, original power, and it felt very good. Uh, it's most impactful against like Sunspot, Bishop, or any card that's boosted by Shuri. The cost, you know, and I kind of feel that way even about Valkyrie to a certain degree. It's just too expensive. So 4-3 uh, down to 3-3 three, three on reveal. Set all cards here for the original base power. Now, I don't think a lot of people have Shadow King. Shadow King was largely one of the more underperforming cards in the game, and I never really found a home. Hopefully, this will change things a little bit, but we'll see. But I don't recommend go out and getting Shadow King or anything like that. Shadow King's whole purpose is to fight back against exactly this kind of thing that Shuri's doing. But this card simply released too weak to be consideration for Morris deck. Yeah, and situational. Uh, we recognize his status as Series 4 card and he's used to answer powerful decks rather than fuel them. Might limit his potential to impact the metagame. However, we're happy just to give him this boost and see where things land for him. All right, Sentry. Sentry... I'm super interested in playing Sentry. Uh, like now that Sentry is a 410 and there is an, a 4 uh, a minus 10 void, uh, Sentry's a card. I just haven't found a great home yet. It, it takes a lot to get Sentry to work. While these a number of changes aren't obviously impactful buff, it does increase the potential reward for running Sentry and the potential damage donating your void with Viper can do. Just change would be interesting to try it out. So we're making here. So the idea was play Sentry and Sentry can only be placed cannot be placed in the right lane and then the void goes into the right lane and then you drop a viper and send that the minus 10 void over or you play sentry on cosmo right and then it doesn't create the void or you zero and then you play the sentry and now you have a 10 power card so that gives consideration for playing it instead of maybe typhoid mary or atuma uh that's kind of a big deal or there were like professor x you know, and then you can't add any more if you play Professor X in the right lane or clogging the right lane. The other solution, uh, an idea with Sentry is maybe playing Valkyrie so that you 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 convert that uh, minus 10 or now minus 10 void into a plus, you know, just a regular three with Valkyrie. I, I'm interested to see if we can get Sentry to work. And Sentry is a, is a good card, just a lot of setup to make it work. I've definitely lost a Sentry before. I don't own Sentry. I don't know if I'm going to buy Sentry, you know, I, I, I just we will have to see if Sentry becomes like a dominant card and it's going to be a while before Sentry uh, shows up anywhere. Where is Sentry? Sentry is right here. So um, this is about maybe, let's say, two weeks out. We're guessing just a guesstimate. 
about two weeks out when these cards will be dropped and then these ones will he'll be about a month later so i know a lot of people are waiting for dark hawk and null uh but these are the cards that are going to be dropping into series three uh probably on tuesday two weeks from now okay now let's get to the rest of it uh balance future so this is they're talking about what they're going to do in the future speaking of changes we're interested in trying out we have some exciting announcement about the future of card balance for marvel snap starting with the upcoming april patch currently scheduled for the 18th which is a tuesday we'll be making weekly changes cards in the game every patch every four weeks continue to release on tuesdays which happens about every four to five weeks uh include cards updates as well but the intervening weeks will each feature changes going live on thursdays versus ota so uh like the changes like the big changes like changing the way that the text on shuri works has to happen on patch day which is once a month but these minor adjustments where it is power going up or cost going down or down or up or down either way uh, can be done on a weekly basis and the, on thursdays uh verse through over the air we know this is sort of balance and prioritization may have many of you clamored for so thanks for your passionate feedback it's a multi-team effort to get the process buttoned up for the last month and we hope you're excited as we are let's go ahead and address some of the questions should be popular uh thursdays uh, it looks like it's just the logistics issues on their end and plus it, it doesn't interfere with patches what kind of changes will we make our ota tool gives us the ability to make changes within about a week or two but it's limited to what we can change continue to develop the tool expand its limitations but now you can expect weekly thursday changes to be numbers only like the above with our larger patches still addressing the more major changes to card functionality and vfx will you be nerfing or buffing cards and this is interesting uh as as you can see with century and shatter king we do attend to buff cards through ota in fact we're going to guarantee at least one buff in each of these updates and they only said they're going to try this for a month though so this is not forever we will continue we will also use this method to balance the metagame with nerfs but only when it's deemed necessary uh our target is two to four cards a week on patch week it's possible to change more but that's a unique access point for us uh how will we pick the cards to change we have a list of buffs a very small list of nerfs <laughs> that we're we're making to existing content we're probably chasing them based on how we expect the individual changes to affect the metagame or even combined with new cards and locations but we'll shift them around based on the live metagame why not just make these changes now uh they want to do incremental changes which i i can understand why one of the changes we're wary of is the balance patches how much do we want is too much avoiding changes more than a handful of cards at a time for a while now and we think it's a good thing because they're easier to digest plus pacing out these changes lets us politely freshen the metagame periodically rather than let it shake it all up once and then watch things settle into a new state of stasis how would we do this we planned a trial period for may and depending how it goes we may continue onward we're optimistic about that at the moment that's all so what do you think about all this um I uh, I largely would agree with everything they said. I'm a little bit sad uh, that they uh, nerfed uh, Sunspot, but um, uh, the Shuri Red Skull thing, it, it's been dominant for so long. It's dominant right now. It, you know, it was in the last couple of days since the, the hit monkey. And so uh, I, I just, I, I you know, playing against Shuri and playing Shuri, you know, I just can't do it for a third season in a row. And so good riddance, you know, that's, I'm sure everybody's got their own opinions on that. If you're a Shuri player, then you're probably upset, but a sunspot makes me a little bit sad, but I'm, I'm excited to try out, uh, not only Sentry and Shadow King, hopefully they have a place in the game. Let me know what you think in the comment section as always. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.